Two eight five one, turn right heading one eight zero. Hi everyone, my name's DJ's Aviation and I'd like to welcome you to this video of mine. In today's video, we have some more updates regarding the new middle of the market airliner dubbed to be the Boeing 797. As we close in on the official reveal, more and more news will start coming out and hence why today I'm making this video. The news we have specifically relates to orders in the Asian market. With the constant growth of the Asian region, the 797 is predicted to be of huge demand in this area of the world, and trying to please the carriers in this area will be a must if this project is to succeed. Asian carriers are proposing one small change to the 797 in order for them to be willing to place orders. What is that exactly? Well, it's as simple as the 797 having a small freight hold. This would in fact win over customers in the Asian region and who knows, possibly more areas around the globe that we previously wouldn't have thought of. As we know, demand is high in the Asian region for highly efficient aircraft that are capable of carrying a number of passengers. And many believe that the 797 could be the answer to that. It'd be the alternative to the successful A321neo family with different versions like the A321 Cabin Flex and the A321 Long Range. In a recent interview, the founder and chief executive of Avalon Holdings, the third largest aircraft leasing firm in the world, said that all carriers around the globe have ideal amounts of cargo they'd like to take with them on various flights. With the constant growth in the freight industry, carrying freight has become more and more important for airlines. For example, it has been noted that American carriers would typically like 5 tons of cargo with the bags that they load on on each flight, whereas carriers in Asia have very different requests. Asian carriers would prefer 10 tons of cargo, which is double what American carriers would like, on top of the bags that they have. This is quite the increase. And with Asia being an area where Boeing could certainly gather a lot of orders, they'll need to make sure they listen to the requirements listed. As we know, manufacturers these days, like Airbus and Boeing, all do talk with their possible customers about what they see in the future of aircraft. For example, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Project Sunrise. If you're unaware what Project Sunrise is, it's a project that Qantas have started with Airbus and Boeing. What they aim to get from this project is an aircraft that can operate flights from Sydney to London direct, Sydney to New York, Melbourne to New York, and Melbourne to London, among other different routes uh, that they just haven't noted just yet. But pretty much they want an aircraft that can operate very, very long range flights. Now, throughout the past couple of years, Qantas have been speaking directly to Airbus and Boeing about producing an aircraft that is capable of doing these things. And while Airbus have the A350 ULR on offer and Boeing have the 777-A, the CEO of Qantas, Alan Joyce, has said that these aren't exactly what they are looking for and are continuing to talk with Airbus and Boeing to try and get an aircraft that they want to do. And as you can see, this shows just how, and this shows Qantas alone have such a huge influence on Airbus and Boeing when it comes to potential future aircraft, because Airbus and Boeing know how important a customer like Qantas is to them, and they want to please them and get ahead of each other and make an aircraft that is effective with Qantas. Project Sunrise, as I've just stated, is one of the many examples where airlines talk with the likes of Airbus and Boeing to produce aircraft that are beneficial to them and what they as an airline require. These conversations are usually brought about through customer loyalty and the relationships the two form throughout their ordering periods. A lot of the time, these conversations can be critical to the success of a particular program. There's a few other examples like the A380 Plus and the rumored 77710X. One of these is an aircraft that has been officially revealed by a manufacturer, while the other is going to only become a reality if a carrier is going to make a firm order. Of course, key motivations to create new variants of original aircraft come about because of a customer demand. This is why we also see so many versions in the A320neo family. 
all these aircraft serve a different purpose to multiple different carriers in all regions of the world. Boeing hasn't revealed a lot of information to the public about this new middle-of-the-market airliner, but what they have revealed has been more than enough to gather an idea of what this 797 really is. Boeing have stated that the middle-of-the-market plane, dubbed to be the 797, is set to seat between 220 and 270 passengers in most likely two different variants, with one holding more passengers than the other. So what I would expect is one to be around the 220 to 230, while one is at the 270, maybe even more area. The aircraft would ideally be used on middle-ranged routes like Sydney to Singapore or Melbourne to Auckland. So if there is two variants, could Boeing see a demand for three variants with one pitch directly at the Asian market? That is, at this stage, unlikely. The costs of fixing the aircraft up for a set area may not be all that profitable for the manufacturer unless they can firm orders. If cargo is a huge demand from Asian carriers and Boeing don't feel three variants, with one being able to hold that 10 tons of cargo, is a good option, we might just need to see Boeing change its design to accommodate the market. If they don't do that, they could face severe implications on their program. The founder and chief executive of Avalon Holdings also has gone on to say, this raises a very interesting strategic question. Where is the biggest market for this airplane over a 25 year period? Unquestionably, it's Asia. While it's not always Asia, when it comes to the release of a new aircraft, for the most part it is pitched at a particular airline and their operations. Let's take a look at the A330neo. Would you see Rex, which is a regional airline in Australia, operating with the Saab 340B, order this A330neo? No, it's really, really unlikely. But an airline like Virgin Australia or Qantas, yes, it could certainly be pitched at them, and we could see the two carriers order it. This is the same for the 797. The 797 has ideal routes that it'd be pitched to work on. Some of them include Midwest America to Europe services, which would ideally perform better in all aspects to the older 767s and the A330s. It's also been pitched at heavily congested short-range flights. The example used was flights throughout Asia, and the example that wasn't used but I certainly know as a fact is Melbourne to Sydney. So clearly both parties believe the 797 is needed in Asia and would certainly be the main source of orders for Boeing. So these demands or requests, whichever one you want to call them, by the Asian carriers need to be listened to. Of all the 1,350 new city pairs launched worldwide, last year 600 alone were in Asia and 400 of those were in China. The 2020s will see Asia overtake Europe and the US in terms of traffic at a rapid rate and will see them leave the two behind. In 2024 to 2025, the Asian travel industry will be at its peak and this is when the 797 is set to be introduced. So it would make sense for Boeing to alter their aircraft to match these requests by Asian carriers. As once again, the founder of Avalon, the leasing company, said, Boeing has to be super careful that they build an airplane that is fit for purpose in Asia, because that's where the action is. To lose out on a market as big as Asia could be extremely detrimental to the 797 program. And while sure, it would be likely very popular in America with carriers like Delta and United already expressing their interest even to be the launch customer, the success of the program could be even larger in Asia. So what are the implications if the extra 5 tons of cargo on this 797 is simply not applied at all? Well, it could hypothetically be pretty bleak for Boeing. As we know, Airbus have the A321neo family with multiple versions. Now, if Airbus are willing to listen to what Asian carriers had to say, and from their trade mission where they actually tried to sell their Airbus aircraft, this is more than likely that they would probably listen to the demands, they could produce an extra A321 variant that is perfect for carriers throughout Asia with that extra cargo capacity. 
This could have severe implications on the 797 program. As you'd probably see from this move by Airbus, the majority of carriers throughout Asia and maybe even the Pacific region that wanted this new middle of the market jet from Boeing may end up opting with Airbus as they feel they can discuss what they would like as a carrier and maybe Airbus could alter that aircraft for a specific carrier. This is going to conclude the video for today. I do really hope you enjoyed it. I tried to discuss in this video a little bit more about the consequences, demands, and general knowledge about the 797 to try and make it as detailed as possible. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, of course, the subscription button is always there. Thank you very much for watching another one of my videos, and I do hope to see you all in my next one. Peace. Oh, well,